Hello, Matt Vanicoro here with my friends at Gig Performer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Gig Performer's 4's probabilistic sound designer to create excellent random sounds within specific confines so you can quickly create new sounds and textures for your music. On this channel, you'll also find a bunch more tutorials on how to use Gig Performer. We'll take you inside the rack spaces of professional musicians using Gig Performer to help them own the stage. You'll find lots of info on recreating iconic sounds inside Gig Performer. If any of those things are of interest to you, make sure you click on that like and subscribe button. Anyway, let's check out the Probabilistic Sound Designer. The Probabilistic Sound Designer is a great tool that can actually help you get a lot more mileage out of virtual instruments that you already own. Let's jump in and take a look. So I've got a basic setup here with a nice little Roland Juno synth simulator here. Standard MIDI setup, just a keyboard with a Juno sound. All right, haven't really done a lot to that sound yet, but as you know, the Juno is all about sculpting. You change those parameters, you can come up with totally different sounds. Now, what's really neat about the probabilistic sound designer is that you can use it to just create completely random, but also organized chaos and give you lots of different presets at the touch of a button. So let's take a look. I'm gonna open it up. So to open it up, I go to this little three dots here in the upper right corner of the instrument itself. And you'll see the probabilistic sound designer. All right, so there it is. Now I've got a randomized button, the function to capture parameters on and off, and then remove everything. And I can also load and save some setups. Let's do a couple of basic things. So with the capture parameters button on, I'm able to click on a parameter inside of this instrument. So I'm gonna separate these so that we can get both going at the same time, okay? I click on any parameter while that capture parameters button is on, and that parameter is going to be loaded into the probabilistic sound designer. So let's say I'm gonna do something really simple and easy to understand the filter cutoff frequency. I just click on it and there it is. So now VCF cutoff is in the probabilistic sound designer. Nothing has changed yet. But when I click randomize, watch what happens to the level of it. So right here is the level of it. I move it and you see it moving in the original instrument there on the left side. But if I click randomize, it jumps to a random spot. There we go, click on randomize again. So that's pretty neat. Now I can add other things if I want to, so I can add other elements that it's going to capture. So let's say I also want it to control the resonance, maybe the sub osc volume. So let's find that sub volume. There we go. And I don't know, maybe how about the noise volume and the envelope attack? Wow. A lot of things being randomized now. I'll click it and lots of parameters change on the synth. Click it again. Whoa, total different stuff. So every time I click that, I'm getting a completely new sound. So right away, just already, I've got the ability to just design new presets without having to go in. If you've got synths that you know what parameters you want to adjust, you can just keep hitting randomize. But there's more to it. So as you know, like when I heard, I played that last one, that noise got a little out of control, didn't it? It was like super almost distorted. I can set minimum and maximum values so that it never hits that point that it's super distorted. So if I open up the noise volume, here's the little graph for it, okay? I've got custom curves, but I've also got the ability to just say, okay, I never want the noise to go above 65, okay, percent, there we go. So now when I hit randomize, that sub noise volume, now when I hit randomize, the noise volume is never going to exceed 65. <laughs> So that's pretty neat. Now you'll notice I might also want to set some minimum values because as you just heard, perhaps um, the attack went a little too slow for my taste. That attack went a little too far. So what I can also do is adjust the attack and keep it within a certain range. So I can set them a minimum value and a maximum value and just say, okay, the attack is always going to be within those two dotted lines. So the attack is always going to be reasonable. <laughs> Okay, now some other things that are really cool is you can lock certain parameters. So let's say I listen to that, I'm like, oh, I'm getting closer. That's the sound I want. And I know that that has to do with the cutoff frequency and the resonance. So I'll hold them and I'll say, okay, those are cool. Don't touch them. Randomize everything else. 
And if you watch, those will stay. So the attack is still changing, the sub volume is still changing, the noise volume is still changing, but the cutoff frequency and the resonance are staying where they are. So you can, when you finally get to that golden era, it helps you hone in on what you're looking for. So this is great if you like have an idea of what you're looking for, but you're not 100% quite sure the best way to get there. You know what you want to adjust, but you're not positive yet. You want to get inspired. You can use the probabilistic sound designer to give you that kind of inspiration. Now, I can go ahead and actually adjust curves and that will adjust the probability for me. So if I decide, okay, I open up the curve and I pick a curve shape for resonance, now it's going to favor the values in the center. All right, I can still set minimum and minimum, maximum, don't worry. So I can go ahead and restrict the minimum and maximum values, but now it's gonna be more likely to find those values in the center. And I can draw this curve the way I want to, but again, I can just keep hitting randomize. And get a different sound every time, but the amount of difference is starting to restrict and restrict as I hone in on what I'm looking for. So that's pretty cool. You can control a lot of parameters, and I picked this simple synth just to show you off the top of my head. But you know, if you want to take a look, we have a great video showing you how to get into this with a complicated synth like OBE and control all the you know massive parameters that might be in a synth that large. So it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't yet. Now, if you like what you're working with, you can load, save, or you can clear everything if you want to. So I can go ahead and remove all. I can save my parameters um, and I can load them up later on. So let's say I remove everything and I decide, oh, I had a setup that I really liked. I'll tap load. And right there you can see my Juno randomizer. I open it up and I've got the ability to restore the associated plugin state and that's going to restore the original plugin state and give me all the parameters. I'll just cancel. I'll work with what I'm working with now and I'll hit randomize and you'll see I've got the restricted level of the resonance there with a curve favoring certain values. I've got different degrees of slopes on each one of these. So I've got a randomizer that I really like for this instrument. already set up. So you can take that and port it over to, you know, different patches as you make them. And again, you can use this for audio. You can use this for your favorite sound adjusting plugins. That's the great thing about the probabilistic sound designers. It doesn't really care the plugin as long as it can read those values. When you're in capture parameter mode, you click on the value and that just jumps right in there. I just added pulse width modulation to my randomizer. And now there's a new value that is getting randomized every time. So it doesn't care. It's agnostic. As long as you can capture that value, you can randomize it. And again, it's a great way to just sort of eke out a lot of extra value out of an instrument that you already have. And you just start creating great presets. And I find it a great way to hone in on a certain sound that you're looking for when you're not 100% sure how to get there, but you want to just hone in on it and try to get that inspiration to strike. So the probabilistic sound design feature is a more effective way to randomize your sounds. As your rack spaces grow more and more robust, Gig Performer makes it easy to resize and organize all your blocks. You can learn how to do that from the link on the screen. And if you haven't tried Gig Performer yet, you can download a free 14-day trial from the link below. Thank you so much for watching.